Welcome back to the Barbecue Lab. My name is David Gafford, and today we're going to take a deep look into the Smart Row ST54 digital thermometer. We've got it all coming up. The SmartRow ST54 digital thermometer is available on Amazon for right around the $25 to $30 range. And it's a thermometer that you can use in barbecue and in-home cooking. You can use it with an oven, you can use it with uh, any type of smoker or a grill. But the idea of this thermometer is that it's actually a dual probe thermometer. Now, what do I mean by dual probe? Well, dual probe, I mean there are two probes that are actually meant to be plugged into the meat that you're cooking. Now, if you look at the probe itself, you can see that this probe is about six inches long. And with a six inch long probe, what you have is this nice little bend to it to be able to keep the, the, the probe from running into the top of grills or things like that if you're looking at a different uh, layout. Now, one of the things that's nice about this is it has this nice little springy transition from the probe wire to the probe itself. And I think that's a great little, uh, great little piece. They've probably taken a little bit of inspiration from Thermalworks and a few others, but um, it's a nice little transition piece. Now, the wire itself is kind of a heavier braid, and this heavier braid, though, it still does kink quite often. The other thing we have is the end here, and it looks like an eighth inch jack that you see on an audio cable. It's not quite the same, uh, especially that you only have one ring on here instead of the tip ring or tip ring sleeve design if you're an audiophile like me. But um, it's a pretty hardy probe as far as probes go. One of the things that I really like that the probes have is that you have this nifty little um, probe clip. And this probe clip allows you to take the probe, stick it through each side, and then you can take this probe and put it between your grates of your grill so it can hold the probe so it can actually check ambient air temperature. Now that's a nice little feature. One of the things that's frustrating though is I don't like using this with curved probes because inevitably you put the probe through and the probe sits between grill grates, but what sits below your grill grate? All of the connection here. So I'm not a huge fan of that design. Now you can actually try to twist it up and it'll probably hold, but it doesn't always hold in my experience. So the idea is I actually really like straight probes for this where I can keep this section out of trouble. But <clears throat> that's uh, one, of the, one of the drawbacks on this model in my opinion is that all of the probes are of the six inch meat variety and there's not an ambient air temperature probe. Now you can definitely use this as an air temperature probe. But the thing is, is that when grill space and grill real estate is at a, at a premium, this takes up a lot of room. So that's one of, one of the drawbacks for me. But uh, looking at this model, <clears throat> one of the things that's nice when you actually get into the unit itself is that when you go to turn it on, it's a very, very simple design. When you look on the back, there is an off and a timer and there's a cook switch. Now when you take it and you turn it to cook, it's going to fire up and you're going to get the cook layout, which shows you which probe you have in, what your ambient temperature is, all of those types of things, what the probe is reading right now. So if we go ahead and take a probe and we go ahead and plug it in, let's plug in probe one. You can see probe one is reading about 55 degrees here in the barbecue lab studio right now. So that's probe one. Now probe two, it shows three lines and those three lines means that there's nothing plugged in there. Now you can notice that probe one and probe two are both set default to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you can actually edit that. So say for example, if we wanted to edit that, all we'd have to do is come over here to P1, P2, hit P1, P2, that's P2 right there. There's P1. Let's say we want to take it up in temperature. Say we're going to take this on a pork butt and we want to pull our pork butt, let's say out at 199. Then there we go. Now, if I have a particular meat in mind that I want to use, there are some presets on this. 
if I hit the SS Meet button here, it's gonna pull up in the green section above some of the options. Now the first one is beef set for almost well done. And then if I hit it a second time, there's beef at a medium. Then this is beef at a rare or fish. There's kind of a hamburger setting, a pork setting, a chicken setting. And then if you go all the way to the right where you have the actual settings gear, that takes you back to where you're gonna set the temperature yourself and not deal with any of the actual presets that are set. My opinion on this is you wanna actually set the temperatures yourself and not rely on those presets because if I want something that I'm gonna be doing pork, 170 or 160 doesn't necessarily work for pork. If I'm doing a pork loin, I wanna pull that around 145, 140. And if I'm doing pulled pork, I wanna pull that at 199 to 203, somewhere in there. So that's the, the presets, uh, they can be useful, but I, I would recommend setting your own for each one. Now you notice the backlight has gone off on this. And to get the backlight on, simply touch one of the buttons and your backlight comes back on. Now there's also a timer mode on this. And the timer mode, if you look here, you can see there's off, timer, and cook. If I just turn this to timer, you can see on the front we get a timer. Now, and if I, all I have to do is if I hit start, this is going to be a count up timer if I just hit start. It's gonna count up and it'll count all the way up to 99 minutes and 99 seconds. Now, on the other hand, if I wanna go ahead and make this a count down timer, I just need to set my time. So say I wanna set this for, oh, say 30 minutes. So there's 30 minutes. And notice I have 31 minutes and 15 seconds. Problem is I can't go back down now. All I can do is go up. So if I missed and I go all the way around, I have to turn it off and turn it back on in order to get back. So that's a little bit of a limiting factor, but let's just be honest. I mean, I don't know many of us that are gonna be using a count up timer of less than 99 minutes. A lot of times we're talking about a count up timer for a longer cook. So I know when I did certain things to the meat. So it can be useful if you're looking for about an hour and a half of timer, but that's, um, that's pretty much just limitations there. Now also on the back side, we have a couple of magnets and the magnets will actually hold this to your refrigerator pretty well. Um, so I haven't had any problems with it holding. The other thing is you can change this between Celsius and Fahrenheit. There's the C button. That'll take us if we actually go back to cook. Now we're in Celsius as opposed to Fahrenheit. There's also a kickstand on the back of the unit and this kickstand can go flat or kick out and will allow it to actually stand up on a tabletop or the grill, grill a shelf, whatever you might be using it with, which is a nice little feature itself. We found ourselves using the magnet most of the time when we use this unit. Now, so who is this unit right for? If you're looking for a two channel thermometer that is not Wi-Fi and that is not Bluetooth, um, you could take, definitely take a look at this one. It's two probes and it has an audible alarm that allows you to be able to hear the alarm from quite a distance away but this is not one that you would necessarily walk away from and go inside the house. You'd want to find a thermometer that has the either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth capability or has a remote second unit you can take with you. So that's what I would consider looking into if you're for that. But if you're looking for something that is really just two channels with two probes, give SmartRow a look. The ST54 can be found on Amazon for right around $25 and we'll put a link in the description below. I wanna say thanks for joining us here on the Barbecue Lab. And if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that we put out. We're reviewing new gear all the time for people just like you to buy the right product for you in your backyard cooking arsenal. So I wanna say thanks for joining us. I'm David, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on the Barbecue Lab.